It's been a month since the launch of the PlayStation 5 and I am one of the lucky ones to buy the console on day one and I want to share my thoughts on the experiences about the PlayStation 5. Let's talk about it. So the PlayStation 5 was finally launched worldwide on November 90, 2020. The consoles has been sold out worldwide and also one of the biggest launch ever with almost 2.5 million units sold on day one. I also bought an extra DualSense controller, an HD camera, a 3D Pulse headset and a DualSense charging station. Many people still trying to pre-order the PlayStation 5 and maybe it takes about 5 months until the consoles are back on stock normally. And I say normally because many people want to pre-order the console as fast as possible and in a few minutes it's sold out again. I have to be honest with you. In my country I pre-ordered the PlayStation 5 in October 2019. There was nothing official about pre-ordering from the website or anything else. The only thing I can pre-order the PlayStation 5 is in the store itself. So I pre-ordered it. And, just, and I just have to wait until the day it launches. And that's how I got my PlayStation 5 on day one. But I'm not the only one who pre-ordered it. If I maybe pre-ordered the PlayStation 5 a month later, it was possible I wasn't in the first wave of delivery. But now I have the console for at least a month and I want to tell you about my experiences about the PlayStation 5. And it's an amazing console so far. The graphics looks nice, the SSD works really fast and I love the design of the console. Perhaps one of the best looking device ever. But it also had some issues for some users experienced. I've read some articles about the PlayStation 5 issues before I have it and I want to avoid it. But of course I had issues with my console as well. Two big issues actually in the first three days. The first issue I have experienced with the PS5 was rest mode. I mostly don't use the console in rest mode unless I had to charge up my 3D Pulse headset of the controllers, but for controllers I can charge it up with a DualSense charging station. Lots of people doesn't have those issues with rest mode, but I had it once. When I get back home from the grocery store, I saw the PlayStation 5 was in rest mode. You can see that when it's yellow or orange light on the console, the same PS4 does. So I thought, it's not a problem. But when I started the console, it didn't boot up from rest mode. The light keeps on blue and I saw nothing on the TV screen. The only thing I had to do was to unplug my power cable and plug it back in and boot it up. It did say there was some damage on the database that must be recovered. I turned it all off for rest mode, so the only thing I do is just starting up the PlayStation 5 in cold boot and shutting it down. Now I tried rest mode again since two days ago, and I must admit it does start up after rest mode, so that issue has been fixed. The next issue was much worse than rest mode crashing. I was playing on Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War and as you can see this is Call of Duty PS5 version running, not the PS4 version. Then suddenly the game froze's and the system crashes. It went just black on my screen and my console was still on. I couldn't do anything. I had to unplug my power cable again because I can't shut down the PS5. And when I turned on the console back on, it was still a black screen. And I thought, oh my god, I hope my PS5 isn't broken, I just have it for 3 days and now this happens. But thankfully my PS5 went in save mode and it has to be recovered again. The first recovery wasn't in save mode when rest mode crashed. And I hoped my PS5 will work again. There was a moment when recovery stops at 39% and I thought, okay, the PS5 is broken now. Bad luck for me and... Then it just went 100% and started up again. Oh, thank god. It works normal again and since then I don't have any problems with the system anymore. I do say that the games I have can still crashes. As long as the game crashes it's not a big problem for me, but it's not like I have 10 crashes every day. 
Also, we got a system update every week so far for system stability. My first system update I had was like 5 days later after launch and I had no issues with the system crashes. About the external hard drive, I don't know about that because I don't have it and I'll never use it for the PS5, but that's just my opinion. About the noise on the PS5, I'm definitely saying that it is really quiet. Like really, really quiet. I can hear a little bit the fan spinning when I'm very close at it and nothing when less than one meter distance of it. But I think it can be a bit louder in the future, but not so loud like the PS4 does. When I had the PS4 at launch back in 2013, it was also quiet. And the first time it makes so much noise was when I played Uncharted 4 in 2016. So it took at least two years to take full potential of the PS4. That was like really loud. But I used a PS4 headset and I don't hear the fans spinning on PS4 to be honest. Speaking of headset, I have a 3D Pulse headset. It's a much nicer headset than my Platinum headset. It feels soft and comfortable, a bit smaller, the sound is great and you can use 3D audio. Also it comes with a charging cable which is the same for the controller. I never tried Platinum headset on the PS5, but I'm sure it's supported and also works for 3D audio. Now about the DualSense controller, this is absolute one big improvement over the DualShock 4. I really like how it feels in your hands, I like the adaptive triggers, the haptic feedback is great, it's a totally difference of vibration like walking or shooting etc. It feels really different and the DualSense feels a bit bigger and heavier than the DualShock 4, which some people love it when they have big hands. Others don't, I guess. Some people doesn't really like the adaptive triggers, but of course, it's no problem. You can change the intensity to turn it on average, weak or off. So the choice is yours, how you like to use it. Also the same for the intensity of the vibration. About the duration of the battery, it is a bit longer than the DualShock 4 has, so if you think the battery will hold twice as long than the DualShock 4, it isn't. Because what I think is that the adaptive triggers and haptic feedback takes more from your battery. But overall it's the best controller ever made. The DualShock 4 was good when they changed it, but this DualSense controller is beyond my expectations. I wonder what Sony will do if the next generation console comes out our 7 years, I think, with new improvements on the controller. So those are my experience so far and a short video I made. If you guys have a PS5, what are your experiences? You have the same issues like I have or other issues I haven't? What are your thoughts about the DualSense controller? Uh, let me know in the comments. My English isn't perfect if you hear my comments because English isn't my native language, Dutch is my language. If you like my content, make sure to subscribe my channel, follow my Twitch channel with a notification on when I go live, I also use Twitter about updates when I go live on Twitch. The links are in the description below. Thanks for watching, have a good day and be safe everyone.